All right, guys, it's Wednesday night. It's seven o'clock central. And what do we do on that? Uh oh, I think we lost Don. Hopefully he'll come back. But I've got Don Andrews. Don played from 89 to 93. He's a graduate. He was number six. He was a running back and on some excellent, excellent teams. And hopefully he'll sign back on in just a second and we'll get started. I do want to send my condolences to the family of Reggie Tolbert, who was a class of 86 with me and so many others. Reggie played a couple of years with us, but we lost him this week. And I, I posted the obituary in case anybody wanted to know the arrangements and reach out to his uh, family. I know we have several in our class who were friends with him. All right, we got Don signing back on and we will get started with Don in just about uh, hopefully 15, 20 seconds here. All right, Don, you're back with us now, bud. Yeah, How sorry about doing? that. I clicked the wrong button. No worries, no worries. If that's the worst thing that happens tonight, we're doing okay. But uh, Don, I appreciate you making some time tonight and, and thank you for, for uh, letting us go on your journey with you for a few minutes. Okay. Well, Don, you grew up in, uh, you were class of 93. Number six, running back. You played on some excellent teams back in the day. But before we go back to the days in Northview and growing up in Dothan, I know that you're a travel emergency room nurse. You also do some Division I umpiring and baseball. But catch us up a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about what's the current Don Andrews up to these days. Well, uh, Bernard, like you said, I'm a travel ER nurse, uh, also a Division I college baseball umpire. Um, actually, I'm um, like right at 20 months into retirement after doing 26 years in the United States Army. So uh, I'm just enjoying retirement life now. Well, thank you, Don, for, for all your years of, of service. We, we certainly appreciate all of what you have done over the last 20 plus years. But it doesn't sound like you're very retired to me. Uh, no, that, that sounds like my wife. She's like, you work harder now than you did when you was in, in uh, actually in the military. And I said, well, I get to pick and choose when and where I want to go now. And when you are, oh, <laughs> Damon Glasgow says, what's up, hoghead? <laughs> All right, Damon, you, 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 you poking the bear. But uh, Don, when, when you're doing travel at ER responsibilities, what does that necessarily mean? Is it, do you have like, periods of time you're in certain cities or what, tell us a little bit more about those responsibilities and how that goes for you. So yes, uh, usually we uh, move around from city to city, town to town. Uh, usually the contracts are 13 weeks. So basically you go into a facility, uh, I say like Dothan, Birmingham, Montgomery, and you are working their emergency department or their healthcare facility for 13 weeks. And when did you receive your training to be an emergency room nurse? Uh, I graduated my nursing training in 2006. Uh, basically the military just sent me to a university in North Carolina to mm -hmm. get my bachelor's in nursing. And ever since then I've been what, doing nursing. Wow, is it something that did you did you envision wanting to do this, or is it something that just kind of found you over time? Uh, I actually wanted to be a physician assistant. Mm -hmm. So at the time I applied to PA school and a nursing school, I had no desire to be a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, I took the basically I applied to both programs, and I was on a deployment in Iraq, and once nursing school accepted me I was like hey I need to take a break from deployment so this is the first thing I'm gonna take and took the nursing route and been in love with it ever since. Isn't that interesting how you never anticipate you falling in love with your your second career and now you're, you're doing it pretty much full time if you're going 13 weeks at the time in different places it just it's amazing how how I guess life finds us and make certain paths for us. So I, right. I, I know that you're enjoying it or you wouldn't be doing it as much as you are. But Don, where where is home? Or is every 13 weeks now a new home these days? Well, home is Hinesville, Georgia for me. Uh, I'm about 45 minutes 
west of uh, Savannah. Mm -hmm. I sit right off of Highway 84. That's the funny thing about it. I said, I can get on 84 and just drive from my house directly into Dothan with no problem. Yeah, you no, no turns, no turns. Yeah. Jason Mullins says to tell you hello, Don. Okay. We've got, guys, we've got Don Andrews, number six, running back, 89 to, to 93. He was a graduate. And he played on some some really some real talented teams back in the day, and we're we're going to hit those days in just a few minutes. But in addition to being an emergency room nurse with different uh, responsibilities, how do you also find time this time of the year to be a Division One college baseball umpire? How does that fit? Do you sleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I get plenty of sleep. Basically, uh, during baseball season, I try not to work as much as a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I can take a contract or not take a contract during mm -hmm. baseball season. Mm -hmm. And if I decide to take one during the season, uh, the facility has to agree to let me make my own schedule. So, Oh, that's the best of both worlds for you, I yeah. bet. Yeah. And with Division One baseball starting this week, are you starting to to have games on your schedule? Yes, yes. Yeah, I already worked. Uh, I worked a Division Two game last week, and I worked a uh, Division Two game this upcoming week up at Vet Austin State. And then the next week is when I get into my uh, Division One schedule. Now, we'll be in the hot weather soon enough, but these early games, are they during the day or are they at night? And how cold well, they're, are they They're during the day. Uh -huh. And it's pretty much warm over here. So, well, I was going to say, but even in the South, we can have some cold days right. if you're playing at nighttime. So, I'm assuming that most games are going to be in the afternoon or during the midday when there's a little bit of little bit of heat. But, uh, but you never know. You could have a 75 degree day, or you could have a 25 degree day. <laughs> they could be back to back. So, I guess you got to be prepared. Correct. Well, Don, let's uh, let's kick it back to to the good old days. Let's take it back to the to the eighties. Did you did you always grow up in Dothan, or did your family move to Dothan prior to high school? Or tell us a little bit about the origin story. No, I grew up in Dothan. And mm -hmm. which part of Dothan did you live? Uh, it's more uh, off First Street, off the Helen Avenue by the Overpass Bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to say it's Reed Street Bridge, if I'm not mistaken. Sure, sure. And then elementary and middle school, where did you attend? Uh, elementary was uh, Hollins, and middle school was Honeysuckle, and of course high school was Northview. Sure, sure. And then, what? Who were some of the the neighborhood running around buddies? Uh, Terrence White, Chris White, uh, Jody White, all the White. Yeah. Uh, brothers and cousins, mm -hmm. uh, Rodney Reynolds, and of course Dame Glasgow that wants to talk trash on the internet. <laughs> I, I, I'm assuming it's all with love. It's all yeah. with love. <laughs> well, Don, growing up, did did sports just come naturally to you? Were you dragged into it by your buddies, or were you the one dragging them into the sports? Uh, I'll pretty much say both. Uh, I have older cousins that played, so decided to try to follow, you know, follow them. And then, of course, when, you know, when we was coming up, if your friends played, you played. Oh, yeah. Um, so There wasn't so. a lot of sitting around on a couch each no. day. No, not at all. <laughs> and in your, did you did you guys play in the neighborhood or did you have a rec center that you went to? Yeah, we played in the neighborhood and also played at uh, Lincoln Community Center at Walton Park. Oh, sure. Boy, the athletes that came through Lincoln Center and, and Walton Park over the years, phenomenal. Right. But I have to ask, I always like asking this. During the, the day, or during the, when it was at the end of the day, before dinner or whatever it was, what was your signal when you knew it was time to get on home and stop playing in the neighborhood? Street lights coming on, or your mom, or my mother standing on the porch yelling. Yelling. There you go. There you go. Some have the, the like the big dinner bell. Others are just, I mean, there's everybody has their own, but most of the folks is when the street lights were right. coming on. Right. And you know, when we have that time change in November and then in March, it's a huge difference on how late you can stay out. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not fun when 4.30 in the afternoon, it's already dark. 
uh, in the, the November time period. But uh, Don, that's that's so good. Now, what were the sports of choice? What was your favorite uh, growing up, like let's say elementary and middle school time period? My favorite was actually baseball. Is that right? Yeah. Did you play at Lincoln or did you play Oregon? I played at Lincoln and Walton, Walton Park. Mm -hmm. And were you part of the rec leagues that played against the different wards in town? Yes. Yeah. Well, very good. And then in the neighborhood, you know, you, you said you had some older cousins. Let me ask about them. Did they go to Northview, Dothan, or a different high school? I know my uh, most of my cut family was down in Slocum. Okay. Red Top. So they played at Slocum High School. Well, we got another Andrews who just signed on. I don't know if he's related to you. Martin Andrews just signed on. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my first cousin, man. That's my first cousin. There you go. We got Joseph Johnson. Hey, JJ. Thanks for joining us tonight. We got Don Andrews, class of 93. Powerful running back on some pretty good teams. Now, did you always know you were going to Northview, or was there a question that you might go to Dothan or, or a county school? I know. I always knew I was going to Northview. And when, when were you first exposed to, to Northview sports? When did you first go to Rip Hughes or maybe come to a hoops game or baseball game? Ooh, probably my freshman year, was, if I can remember correctly, my freshman year. Well, that's pretty interesting. It, it's, you know, it, everybody has a different story. Some had older siblings or cousins who went to Northview, so they grew up going there or going to Rip Hughes on Friday nights. And then others, not until they either played in their first game or were actually a student, did they have any real exposure. Do you remember the, the – let's stick to the honeysuckle years. Was football your main sport or was baseball still still your first love? Uh, baseball is still my first love, but I, I enjoyed playing uh, football and basketball at, while at honeysuckle. You know, and I think because the city – Youth leagues were so strong in Dothan. The middle schools didn't, at least my years, didn't have baseball. They just right. had football and basketball for the middle schools. And, of course, uh-oh, I got to ask you from Damon. Ask him about the hole that was closed. <laughs> now, I want before you answer, I got two things to share with you. One, the statute of limitations is long expired, so you're free there. <laughs> two, this is going to be a public video on YouTube in about an hour. So with that, do you care to answer, Damon, or you want to just move on for now? I answer because every time we get together, that's his favorite question when we, we want to reminisce about playing sports. Uh -huh. uh, basically, we was at practice. Um, what, now, set the tone. What year? What school? It was at Honeysuckle. Okay, uh, so I want to say we was in the eighth grade. Well, so I know that Damon might have been like a lot of basketball. 88. So are we talking about eighth grade basketball? Uh, football. Football, okay. Uh, and I think the play, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 32 dive or something like that. And Coach Coach Creel called the play. And uh, instead of me going up the middle, I – did like a sweep. I bounced it outside mm -hmm. and coach Creel came and grabbed my face mask. It's like, Hey, that hole was wide open. Why didn't you go there? I was like, Hey coach, the hole was closed. And he replied like, man, you can drive a Mack truck through that hole. So how did you see that hole was closed? That's all it is. Uh, but you know what? It's stories like that. And I was going to get to this later, but I'm going to bring it up now since you and Damon have brought it to the forefront. One of the beautiful things about playing any sports of any level on a team is that's a story that you and Damon and maybe a few others can tell every single time you guys get together. Right. And it might, you might not see him for five years from now, but you guys sit down, y'all having a meal and that's all he's got to say. And a big grin comes on your face and a big grin comes on his because it takes you back to that time. Right. You know, it's an innocent time. You're in middle school. We're not paying bills. We don't have to worry about jobs. But it just takes us to such a beautiful time of our lives. And that's why I like doing these stories, uh, Don. I like telling the journeys. I like lit or learning the journeys. And why is that story important to you and Damon? I want you to share that for a second. Uh, it's important because he, he gets a kick out of it. And he, he loves to reminisce. That's his little thing every time we get together. Hey, tell him about the hole is closed. 
<laughs> but it puts a smile on your face. Right. And it puts a smile on his face. And I bet you've got some other buddies, maybe from different times in your life, maybe the military, maybe from sports, whatever. And there's similar stories. Correct. And it takes you back to that time. And that's, I, that's one that truly is one of the beautiful things about sports is it's a team it's a team concept. It's a brotherhood. It's a men in arms, if you will. And you all have a common goal, but it can also leave some very vivid and hopefully mo mostly good, good memories. At least I hope right. they do for you as, as well. I want to welcome uh, one of my classmates, Ramona Stanley Walker, who was she and her brother Harry were on last week. So Ramona, thank you for tuning in from Dothan. Don, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about that transition from high school, I mean, from junior high or middle school, coming over to Northview. Now, when you ended up playing in the ninth grade football, were there honeysuckle teammates and classmates on that ninth grade team as well? Yes, there was. Now, let's talk about the the your meshing with kids from, I assume, Gerard, maybe some from Carver. I don't know how it was when you came over. But did you know some of these other guys from other schools, the other middle schools beforehand? Because maybe you competed against them in sports. Uh, yes, we uh, we knew each other from competing in, in rec leagues and also uh, playing baseball or basketball throughout the community or rec league as well. Now, did any of the guys – who went to the other schools live anywhere near you or were they in just different parts of the city? Uh, I, guess I, should ask, I should ask it this way. The guys who live near you, did everybody come to Northview? Yes. Okay. Cause I assume that's the way it was zoned at that time, but uh, talk a little bit. Who were you ninth grade coaches? Do you remember who the ninth grade football coaches were? I want to say coach Andrews. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, Coach Andrews is one. I think Bubba, Coach Johnson was one. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I can't think of the. He was like more like the weightlifting line coach, uh, big bodybuilder type guy. I can't cannot remember his name. Is Coach, coach Ryan? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Coach Ryan was on with us last year, and boy, he's. What a fun conversation. What a, what a unique man. He was, he was a lot of fun to talk with. Very motivated guy. Uh, yeah. Now I'm several years older than you, of course, Don, but were you, did you guys practice down in the pit, down in the bowl? Yes. That is. Uh, <laughs> and, no, really? Ha, ha, at what level of glass versus grass was there? What was the ratio and rocks and, and nothing but dust down there? That was probably the hardest field that I ever practiced on in my life was down in that hole. Now, what was it about the game of football that you enjoyed? Not all of it's enjoyable. Some of it is terrible. But what I, did you enjoy about the sport? Now that I look back on it, Bernard, I would probably say just being out, being out on the field with some friends, you know, just hanging out with friends enjoying a game of football. That's the biggest thing, it, I, now that I look back on it, mm -hmm. that I enjoy it. You know, we go through all the hard practices, all the workouts, all the preparation. Then we go through the games. And hopefully we win more games than we lose. My experience is that over time, what happened on the field starts to fade. You know, I don't remember certain plays. I don't remember right. minute details. But what I do remember is what you just mentioned. It's the friendships. It's right. the Damon Glasgow's of, in our life. It's those guys who you knew you could count on, right. who, could make, who could make you laugh, who right. sometimes could make you cry, unfortunately. You may get so mad at those guys, or you may be the happiest you want to give them a big hug. They're your brothers. Right. And I don't know if, if, if you have a similar memories or experience that so many of us did. I, I suspect you did. Right. Well, Don, what, from an academic standpoint, did you enjoy school at Northview? Did you just tolerate it? Did you hate it? Did you come to appreciate it? How I actually, and that mix between academics and athletics is always a fine line right in there. I actually like attending Northview. Uh, of course, at that age, I didn't really care for academics, but yeah. 
Uh, and to this day, I really don't care for it, but you know, I'm not a school person. Uh, like I tell people all the time, that's the reason why I joined the military is because I was tired of school. And lo and behold, the military, that's all they do is send you to school. Well, I was going to say, then they, ironically, then they <laughs> set you on your second career path. Yeah. Don, we've got AC Daniels has checked in. And Shirley C says, good to see you, Don. Okay. Tell us hello. Shirley is uh, so glad. She's here every week with us. And she still holds the record for the most viewed watches on this show. So maybe, you, maybe you'll compete against Shirley C and her record. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but Shirley is kind of the memory of our school, if you will, as many years as she was there and dedicated as she was to Northview. Don, let's talk about Northview a little bit more. Let's talk about high school transitioning from ninth grade. You're getting your feet under you. You're learning how to be a ninth grade student, how to be a, a football player. And, and I guess, were you proud to be at Northview? Were you at that time? Did it, what, what was the, mindset of being a football player at Northview 89, 90, 91 time period? Uh, I mean, it was, it was good, but of course, you know, being a running back, I had a lot of, a lot of studs mm -hmm. ahead of me, like the Stanley Owens, the Ken Pride, Johnny Page, uh, Lou Harris, them guys were studs, man. And just looking back now, it's like, wow, I can't believe we didn't win more state championships just knowing the guys that we had on that field. Well, there were a couple of teams that were just outstanding teams right. during your time period. Just couldn't quite get it over the hump to the, to the, the finish uh, up in Legion Field. But you're right. Those names who you just mentioned, some outstanding athletes, and they were right ahead of you. As a running back or as a football player as a whole, did you try to pattern your game after any players in particular who may have been in the pros or college or even older teammates? I, I don't recall trying to pattern myself after anyone. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get on the field and just play football. Do you remember your first varsity action? Were you on special teams? Were you in the backfield? Yes, I, I, I actually do. I, uh, my first time getting on the field was in uh, against Central High School up in Phoenix City. And uh, I was at wide receiver, and that's when I caught my first touchdown. In your first game as well? Yep. Wow. T can you take us there? Do you have vivid memories of that game or that catch? I mean, I know we was losing. That's probably why I got on the field as a 10th grader. <laughs> Well, Central Phoenix City's been no joke for many years. And uh, I just, I don't recall the play. I just remember uh, just going to the end zone. And I think we was on like the five or 10 yard line. And Gray Harrison just threw the ball to me. And I actually caught it. And I think I celebrated. And and, uh, and everybody was looking like, dude, why are you celebrating? We getting our butt kicked. I was like, hey, man, it's my touchdown. <laughs> It's 38 to three and you're yeah. going, no. <laughs> no, but you know, those are the kind of memories that sports makes. And yeah, we may have lost that game, but it sure gave you a, a taste of success. Yeah. And, and I want to step back for just a second. I want to ask you, Don, as an athlete to be successful, I think you'd agree that you have to have an air of confidence about you right. in your abilities. How did any of that, that confidence, because clearly you were a confident athlete in high school, translate either into your military career, your nursing career, or your umpiring career? Right. Uh, that pretty much translated like, hey, in order to get better, you got to put in the work. Uh, you can never be satisfied with the product you put on the field today. And... It's the same product you put on the field yesterday. Uh, so I always, I always tell myself, now just be 1% better today than you were yesterday. Mm -hmm. And is there a way, other than in, here, between your ears, is there a, a measurable way for you to determine that? For example, umpiring. 
Is there a way for you to figure out, did I get 1% better today than it was last week when I called that game? Something like that. Uh, yeah, with umpiring is you're always trying to get that best angle mm -hmm. or have the best strike, uh, stri ball strike ratio when it comes to uh, track, man. Mm -hmm. So whenever they pull out track, man, if I'm at, uh, 89%, the next time I go out and be behind the plate, I want to at least be 90% better mm -hmm. or higher on balls and strikes. Now, TrackMan, is that the is that a computer-generated tracking device for the umpire? Yes, correct. I bet that does. That, that helps you step up your game, and you know you got somebody over your shoulder, so to speak, uh, trying to see what you're doing. Right. Like the square you see on the television when MLB play, that's TrackMan. Wow. I hope, I hope, I hope they never go to anything like that on any level. The human element, just as a sidetrack, because I'm a baseball fan and baseball nerd, the human element to the game of umpiring, of calling it as they see it, I think is so vitally crucial to the, right. to the game. I want to welcome Douglas D.C. Clark, who's watching with us tonight. Okay. Of course, I've got Don Andrews, class of 93, a real renaissance man. He puts in 26 years in the military, and we want to certainly make sure we acknowledge and thank him for his service. But the man pivots. The man becomes an emergency room travel nurse. I know he's got time to be a Division I umpire at the same time. This man does not sleep. When do you find time in a busy schedule, Don, to get your rest if you're having to do both jobs in a given period of time? On my days off, I usually try to uh, get a, a good – days of rest, uh, especially while my wife's at work. So uh, while she's at work, I sleep. And then when I set the alarm clock, when it's time for her to come home, and I get up and pretend like I've been up all day. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets out now. like she. <laughs> We're going to make sure she watches this portion of the conversation. All right. So th those days are over, my friend. <laughs> Well, Don, let, I know I'm skipping around a little bit with you, but let's go back to playing for Coach Andrews. Let's go back uh -huh. to playing for, for Coach Parrish and then uh, I think Coach Whitcomb. Yeah. Two different – let's talk about those two men first. Very different styles. Coach Parrish obviously helped founded our program and was the coach for 12, 13 seasons before we went over to Georgia. And then Coach Whitcomb comes up from, I think, either Marianne or Chipley. And yeah. – where was he from Mariana? I, I, I want to say Chipley. Okay. I knew he was from the Panhandle or somewhere south of Dothan. But very different personalities, very right. different coaching philosophies. But you were one of those players, like my brother David was, right. who played for both men. Can you kind of talk a little bit about what the differences were for you at least? If I had to describe them, I think Coach Parrish was, uh, was more – up in your face uh, uh, type of coach and Wickham was more, more laid back uh, type of coach, I would say. Did you have a preference as to their type of leadership to get, did one get you more motivated than the other? I would say Parrish was, I think we was, a lot of us probably was more scared of Parrish to get being yelled at by Parrish than Wickham. And many a player got got yeah got <laughs> their place. Now, yeah. did you ever, did you ever have your, <laughs> your face mask pulled on? Oh yeah, your attention oh, yeah. a little bit. Yeah, Andrew, I rather, Andrews, what in the Sam Hill's going on here? Yeah, I rather Wick uh, Coach Ryan grab my face mask versus Coach Parrish. <laughs> Wouldn't we, we, I hear you? Oh. <laughs> One of my buddies from back in the day, I want to welcome Robert Edward Lee and happy belated birthday. Mr. Lee, hope you're doing well. And Miss C said he came from Chipley. So thank you, Shirley. Don, let's talk about Coach Andrews. You and I both played for Coach Andrews. He was the, the backs and quarterbacks coach All in right. my time. And I think he kept them in that position for many, right. many years. All right. And just such a motivating, such a great mind from an offensive standpoint. What did you appreciate about playing for Coach Andrews? Uh, Coach, even though he was quiet, but Coach Andrews is very intense as well when he needed to be, uh, and he's going to push you every every play, 
every snap he's gonna he's gonna push you, push you to be better. And some of the very best coaches have that very quality, and that's what I appreciate about our Northview coaches. Now, I can't tell you what a high percentage of folks who I have conversations from your and my time periods about how intense, how tough scrimmages were at practice yes. at, at school and how much they made us better for our Friday night games, which sometimes right. were not as intense as they were. But here's my question for you. I want you to list some of those phenomenal defensive players who were on the other side of the ball during your varsity years. Oh, you ones one on ones or one on twos at the goal line that you had to butt heads with. I mean, during my time frame, you already know Kevin Jackson and Isaiah Reese were probably two hardest hitting guys yeah. in my time. Uh, one one's an all SEC legend. The other walked on at UAB and oh, by the way, played in the NFL for several yeah. years. Cowboys. Trace Tracy Dunnell. Uh -huh. um, Shane, what's Shane? Uh, Hawkins? Not Shane Hawkins. Uh, I, I might be pronouncing his name. Uh, Mullins, who I know is watching us. Give us a name, uh, Jason. Who's he thinking of? Short, uh, short white guy. Lee, Lee. Uh, what's Lee? I can't think of Lee's last name. Uh, could it be Lee Curry? I know Lee Curry played back in that. Well, Lee's kind of tall. Lee's not short. No, no, guy. short, redhead guy. He right, was he'll, he'll come up with it. But yeah. my, my point being is, it's not Lee Robbins. There you there. go. Yeah, Lee Thank Robbins. You. Yeah. Thank you, Jason. Both those guys remember. It's not like you're going against pushovers. No. In fact, when you got ones on ones on the goal line, and if you score or not score, it depends on how much you're going to run or not run. But <laughs> Damon said, was his nickname Red Dookie? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But how intense were those five minutes or 20 minutes, however long those scrimmages were, where you got to get in the end zone and you know those guys are just gunning for the guy who's got the ball. Right. How many face masks did you bust up? How many <sighs> shoulders, you know? <laughs> I didn't bust up any face masks, but I hated that Oklahoma drill. Oh my God, you walk out of that thing with a migraine at any given time. Who were some of the worst you went up against in that? Uh, Kevin, mm -hmm. Isaiah, uh, Tracy Dunnell, Lee Robbins, mm -hmm. uh, Willie White. Hot dog. Yeah, hot dog. Oh my God, them guys were just crazy. I I'm hoping they've completely outlawed and made that drill illegal when I was quarterback I didn't really participate in that stuff I'd hoop and holler just like I was part yeah. of it but we were just kind of on the sidelines but you're right that that separated the men from the boys right there right like that right what was it now I'm going to take you back to a, a not so pleasant memory what is it that really even though you enjoyed the sport enjoyed playing at Northview that really just you didn't look forward to besides the Oklahoma drill. Running that dang on hill, man. I hate that hill. <laughs> <laughs> Running that hill in two a days. We used to have it. Was Coach Hicks still coaching when you came through? He may have uh, he may have pivoted uh, by by the time you came yeah. through. Well, he was a punter. And he would punt the ball down the hill. You boys go go run, go get the ball and come back. Then he punted again down the hill. You boys run down there and go get the ball and come back. It was a game for him. It was survival for us. It was hard. Right. right. Have you been over there in the last several years? You know how it's a softball complex now? Yeah, yeah. But if you look closely, you can still see the trail. You for real? Still, you can still see some of that. And if that doesn't bring back some memories, <laughs> looking at it in a hurry. Yeah. Next time you're in Dothan, I want you to swing by there. and, and Definitely, look. definitely will. <laughs> Don, we've got a few more minutes, but I want you to take us to Rip Hughes on a Friday night. 
Was that a special time and place for you? Yeah, it was. Um, can never forget the, first of all, you can never forget the, the spaghetti meal you have every Friday night before you go over there. And I think uh, everybody used to just blow up the bathrooms in the gym after eating that spaghetti. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Now, did you guys eat? So we used to go to a local restaurant, the, I don't know, Sizzler or something. Um, but did y'all eat at the cafeteria, eat on campus, or were y'all eating somewhere and then come back to school? No, we ate at the cafeteria in the school. That was... Uh, we got a superintendent of Ozark City Schools, Rebus Gertman says, to tell you hello. <laughs> tell Gert I said hello. <laughs> I told you you'd have some of these guys, some of these old heads, I affectionately call them, come by. Yeah. For a minute or two. Gert was yeah. another hard hitter, man. I hated going up against in that Oklahoma drill. Oh my God. Well, you know, a lot of these guys are, are not that you're short, but these guys are tall as well. Yeah. And when they get that big leverage, that's, that's tough unless you can get under. Anyway, so you get, Reba says, baked chicken, spaghetti, baked <laughs> potatoes, and a banana. Man, Reba, if you got all that on board before a game, God bless you. God bless you. I couldn't eat before games. I mean, I'd have a little bit of something, but I just I couldn't eat. But, Don – I can still remember the bus trips from campus right. to Rip Hughes. Now you talk about sleep, and I've said this on this show before. I could fall asleep on the bus. Right. And that's how you just kind of get relaxed, just get in your own mindset. But do you have memories of riding over on the bus and then getting to the stadium as, as folks are, are slowly rolling in? Yeah, I, uh, I know going to the stadium, the bus was always quiet. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like an unwritten rule that we didn't talk before the game, more so get your mind on the game. Uh, no horse playing on the bus going over to the uh, football stadium. Pre-game, do you have memories of being in the locker room before coach gave the pre-game speech or hearing the band above us or above the, the uh, locker room or the, the students? You remember any of that feeling before, right before the game, that nervous energy? Yes. I, for some reason, I always, now that I look back, I always had uh, butterflies. Uh, for some, I always had butterflies. And um, I remember, like, when I used to have to go over and uh, take the kickoff drills because uh, I was on the kickoff team uh, or kickoff receiving team. And my stomach would just be like so tight because of the butterflies and just trying to get ready for the game. Now, what did it mean to you, like Revis just mentioned, when you smelled that baked bread? <laughs> <laughs> I just that was I just knew we was about to eat good uh, before that game, and it's funny that he just just like spoke out the entire menu. <laughs> <laughs> from over like 20, 30 some years ago. <laughs> no, no, and Revis, he'd be probably on Friday. Every Friday has the same same meal, just in honor of his years. Of course, he knows I'm messing with him. But even now, there's many of us. If you smell baked bread somewhere in your life, that might take you back to Rip Hughes Stadium. Yeah. That, that parking lot. Yeah. You know? That was always a unique thing I thought about the, the environment there. Now, what, what was it like, Don, knowing that you had family and friends and classmates and teammates on the sidelines and in the stands at Rip Hughes on Friday nights? It, it meant a lot. It, it really meant a lot. Uh, to this day, I'm sure if I run across these guys, it's, it's still like family and friends. Like we just, even though we probably haven't seen each other in 20, 30 some years, and we run across each other at a store, at a, Probably like, hey, we just just left each other last night. You know, we just pick up where we left off at. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it is funny that you say that. I can, I still, if I go to Dothan, I'll find a couple of my buddies. We'll go get a bite. And it is. You're right, Jason. It's you're always brothers. Yeah. And you love them. You love each other. You hate each other. But you went through it all. And I, I don't, I don't really think it's completely analogous to being in the military of course that's much more 
intense and, and a lot more on the line. But there are a little bit of similarities, I would assume. And I guess that's my question to you. Uh, Don, did you find being in the military have any similarities to being on a team that you played sports in at growing up? Yeah, it's all about the brotherhood and sisterhood. Uh, where you're on a team or you're on the football field, basketball court, baseball diamond, all of it is brotherhood and sisterhood. We're going to take care of each other and try to reach that ultimate goal of winning the game. Now, I know that you have fond memories competing against Dothan High in sports. They were our crosstown rival for 41 years. Right. Competing against cousins or neighbors or buddies. What was it for you that made it special about competing against Dothan High in different sports? Uh, just like you said, we competing against cousins and friends and, you know, people that we grew up against. But the best thing about it is we'll fight it out. Friday night, but Saturday at the parade and fair, we're best of best friends. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have, back in the 80s and 90s, it was big to have one of those, they weren't satin. I don't know what the material was, but did you have a Norfolk uh, jacket of any sort that had maybe a name or a number on the back of it? Yeah, the Letterman jacket. Yeah. I think I was just like, like a suede, like cotton material across the chest, but had leather sleeves. So at no. least by your years, they had transitioned a little bit to leather or a, some type of a similar right. product. Ours were clearly this much cheaper imitation <laughs> version. But tell me if it's 85 degrees outside and if you're not still wearing that jacket out in public. Yeah. Yeah, you got the one. Even if those sleeves got to get pulled up because you were just sweating bullets inside, <laughs> you're gonna wear that jacket, aren't you? Right, right, most definitely. You could be at the the peanut festival, and it could be 80 degrees at night, or frankly, it could be 40 degrees. You never know. Yeah. But you're gonna wear that jacket. People are gonna know you played and go to Northview. That's for sure. Correct, correct. And I always, I always just used to just get so cracked up at that. I never wore mine just because I'm so hot natured. I mean, yeah. I would wear something to wear for you, but I wouldn't wear that jacket. But my buddies, they'd have those sleeves all the way. <laughs> oh, right. man, I used to crack up because they'd be all the way up. And they, you look inside and they're just completely wet from sweat. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. Jason says <laughs> he wore it to the fair and he sweated like a pig. <laughs> we all did, Jason. We all did, buddy. Well, Don, as you, you get out of high school and your your career as a, a team player, a team athlete comes to a conclusion, at what point did it dawn on you, you know, I, I'm no longer playing high school sports. I'm about to go out to my next phase of life, whether it was, and I don't know if at the time you were headed to the military or to college, but when did it dawn on you? Man, my my high school career from sports, it's it's concluded. Did you play baseball your senior year? No, I didn't play baseball my senior year. Uh, I knew when I walked off the my senior year, I knew when I walked off the field, that was gonna be my last mm -hmm. uh time playing football. Mm -hmm. Uh what the season ended up what like November, first week of November, something like that. Yeah. And by December, I had uh joined the military in the delay entry program. So I, I knew that was going to be my last time playing uh, any type of sports. What, if you don't mind me asking, if, if you don't mind talking about it, what led to that decision so quickly during your senior year that you knew that the military was going to be your, your uh, next adventure? Well, like I said earlier, I, I just knew I didn't want to do any more schooling. <laughs> that was my biggest thing. Is I didn't want to go out to college and waste someone's money, mm -hmm. uh, get loans and, knew I wasn't going to be focused on getting a degree. So I just knew military was right for me. And you talked earlier about being deployed to Iraq. How many missions were you ultimately on? Uh, let me see, twice to Iraq and one to Afghanistan. Mm. And, and we don't, we certainly don't have to belabor any of the deployments, but I guess I would ask of you, Whenever you were in the civilian sections of those countries, 
you can't help but compare maybe life at home with life there. Right. And what was it, I guess, uh, from your observations that were just something that surprised you that you saw when you were in those foreign countries? Uh, just the quality of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it was bad. You know, they're living in what huts or whatever they call them over there, but it was bad. Just the quality of life is totally different. And, and you, I, I think you, you had said earlier, you're fully retired from the military at this Correct. point. Correct. What, what level did you achieve? What, uh, um, was your, um, rank, I guess I would ask. I retired as a major. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, again, thank you for your, your time and your commitment and, and representing us so very, very well. We have, we have many Northview Cougars who've served in the military at one point right. or another, and I'm always very appreciative for those. Don, we've got just a couple of more, more minutes. I want you to, to share a little bit about from the high school days, who else were some of your buddies on the different sports teams that maybe you, you've kept up with over the years or, or maybe you've parted ways just because life happens that way? Uh, Cliff, Cliff Mendham and I are, are pretty close. And when I come, up, come into town, mm -hmm. uh, I try to make sure I go by and see Cliff. Yeah. Uh, funny story is, when I was stationed in Louisiana, I want to say about four years ago, the softball team from Dothan, uh, the youth softball team, females, they came there for, I want to say like a World Series. Mm -hmm. And Cliff's daughter was on that team. And Cliff was, I think Cliff and some other guy was a coach. But the tournament was like maybe 30 minutes from my house at the time. So I went up there and supported him and the team and actually got a chance to see his mother. And that, that was real, it was real good to see her because I haven't seen her since I had left high school. Um, of course, I have to deal with Dame Glasgow when I come home. Uh, <laughs> I, I suspect y'all gonna have words after this. So yeah, I, we, will, we will. Leave me uh, out of it, that's between y'all, so. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I'm very proud of Gert. I see Gert doing great things back down in the Ozark. Mm -hmm. um, I seen Gert, I want to say about five or six years ago at, at, the, at the Peanut Festival Parade. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I always track him. And of course, I track him and his son because his son is in the Air Force. So I got to support my military brethren on that one. Of course. Uh, and I'm going to beat up Jason because I think I came and did a tournament near Jason where he was living at. We was trying to link up, but the timing was bad. Uh, he told me about some good restaurants in his area that I had hit up. But yeah, man, like uh, Jason said earlier, it's, it's, it's still a brotherhood, no matter we haven't seen each other in 20, 30 years. You know, we still have that bond of being athletes at uh, Northview. So it's so very true. And, and Don, that's why I do these conversations each week. We're telling the oral history of our football program and largely our school at times. And, and that's going to be our last convers last part of our conversation <clears throat> is about school spirit. Right. Whether during the time period we were in school or, or for ab afterward, my years, when I was in eighth grade, we won our first state title. That was 81. Obviously my senior year, we won our second state title. And sprinkled all through the 80s and into the 90s, our team had success through the playoffs. Correct. And even during your years, we still had lots of momentum through there. Coach Parrish leaves, Whitcomb comes in, and then um, Coach uh, Kennard comes in after him. But share with us a little bit about school spirit and what did it mean back then? What did it mean after you had graduated? Uh, I mean, it's... It's just great to be a cooler, uh, Bernard. I, I mean, it's, I don't know if I can explain any better. It's just great to be a cooler, and especially like, of course, it probably, just like the rest of you guys, it probably hurt when they merged to school and did away with the Northview. So my, my luckily, uh, Lola Allen, uh, she's one of my classmates, and uh, I was following her son playing baseball uh, the last few years at Northview, and uh, I was lucky enough to get this hat and uh, I'm gonna ask you, that's a good looking hat right there. Yeah. Strong looking in. Yeah, and also 
I uh, one of the last uh, baseball games that Northview and Dothan High played, I actually came home to umpire one of those games. So it, it, it meant a lot. Yeah, it meant a lot for uh, me to come home and umpire two schools that I pretty much grew up knowing mm -hmm. and be on the field that I played played on. Was uh, that at Northcutt or was it on campus? It, it was at Northcutt. I, North I think it was the first first game of the three-game series. And, of course, uh, me being in Louisiana at the time, the uh, local association – pretty much didn't want me to come in and do it, but I had pulled some strings to uh, get on the field. So but sure. yeah, that was a great, great moment in my life. Oh, I bet that was a lot of fun for you. Yeah. And certainly yeah. a memory that you cherish. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, it's, it's so true, whether I've got Cougars on here who live in London or the Philippines or all over the United States, I don't care where, you, where they live. There's a common spirit. There's a common, a lot of common memories, regardless of the years that we played. But it really just, it warms my heart to hear your story and so many other stories about why it's memorable to us. Because it really does take us back to a time and place that was so innocent and so much fun for the most part. Not all the high school is fun. Right. But Don, I, I want to thank you, bud, for sharing a little bit of your story and, and, and really, I do mean this, such a renaissance man for all that you have done right. over the years. To you, it may not be a big deal, but to us, seeing each you pivoting to these different careers, I think it's so cool. So thank right. you for, for spending some time with us tonight. Most definitely. Hey, if I ever get a game in the Birmingham area, man, I definitely reach out to you. Oh, please, uh, please do. I love following some of the high school baseball programs. They got some good programs around here. Uh, tell your brother he owes me lunch, too, when I come into town. <laughs> he certainly will both take you to lunch. That's for sure. Well, guys, another just outstanding conversations with Cougars. Don Andrews, class of 93, number six, running back on some excellent teams, military, emergency room nurse, D1, baseball umpire. So some good stuff. So thank you again, Don. Guys, keep coming back each Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Central. We got a whole bunch more Cougars lined up. This is so much fun. We're just getting started. Y'all have a good night. Good rest of your week. Take care.